The Prevent strategy was introduced by Tony Blair's Labour government and at the time the policy focused on preventing violent extremism. It was one of the components of the overriding contest strategy or one of the four P's in order to combat terrorism. Interestingly, the ex-MI5 chief Manning and Buller, when discussing the CTS bill as it was then, uh, said that Tony Blair's prevent had not worked. She also expressed concerns about Theresa May's plans as we have seen them unfold under the guise of preventing pathways to radicalisation that are likely to lead a person to commit an act of terrorism. But instead of scrapping an unworkable strategy, this government has gone much further than the previous one in that it now wants to address what it terms as non-violent extremism, extremism, which they contend forms part of a terrorist narrative. Well, before we can answer that question, we have to uh, explore the definition of extremism before we can move forward. The government has provided a very loose, very loaded definition and a strategy. And extremism is the vocal or active opposition to fundamental British values, which include the rule of law, equality, democracy, and tolerating other faiths and beliefs. Now, it is the vocal or active opposition. It doesn't talk about violence. It talks about ideas. So it's a set of ideas as against another set of ideas. The prevent policy makes mention that it does not focus on the Muslim community, but then in turn notes that the Islamist ideology poses the biggest threat. So it returns full circle to make Muslims and the Muslim community as its focus. Uh, in fact, Sajid Javid, after the Charlie Hebdo killing, said that it would be wrong and it would be lazy to say that this had nothing to do with Muslims and Islam. Cameron told Muslims after Charlie Hebdo killings that they must do more. And this link between extremism and terrorism, the prevent strategy, say it is, is blurred. It goes beyond blurred because the government can produce no empirical evidence of any sort that would prove that having extremist extremist ideas lead to terrorism and the prevent strategy would have been the place to provide that evidence we are being told that we have to believe in certain ideas um, we know that david cameron said that there is no option and no choice in adhering to british values one would pose the question how democratic is that at the heart of this so-called open and free society that Theresa May referred to should be the central right to disagree with government laws and policy. That is supposed to be what democracy is all about, isn't it? So it poses another question. Who are the extremists really? Muslims are is and Islam or the neoconservative narrative that places an entirely powerless community that is already maligned in the dock? Arguments like mine are a counter-narrative to a very dangerous, overzealous policy that robs its victims of a proper legal challenge. Now, government argues that we do not respect the rule of law. I am a lawyer that has been travelling up and down the UK informing people about their rights in accordance with the law and exposing government's determined attempts to do away with laws such as the Human Rights Act. And this is very dangerous because it begins to unpick people's rights. What is destructive to community cohesion is the government's counter-terror laws and the prevent strategy that forces service providers such as teachers to spy on their students, doctors to spy on their patients and colleagues to spy on colleagues. In fact, Theresa May's speech was extremely divisive in its rhetoric uh, in which she proposed the counter-terrorism and security bill at the time in September of 2014 in which she, talk, she uses inflammatory words such as eliminate, uh, threat, defeat, and she also talks about being engaged in a struggle that must be fought on many fronts and in many forms, and it will go on for many years. And also uses uh, other inflammatory sentences such as the threat that we face right now is perhaps greater than it ever has been, and we must have powers, she said, uh, strong powers that we need to defend ourselves. Well, Yvette Cooper, who is the 
uh, shadow Home Secretary, said that we, these are strong powers, but strong powers, in my mind, require strong criticism. Um, it was Carmen Abulusi, a fellow in politics at the University of Oxford, who also echoes some of those strong criticisms of the policy, in which she says that uh, Theresa May is, carries undemocratic values, and she also accuses her experts of being deluded. Sir Peter Farhey, the chief constable who was actually responsible to oversee the prevent strategy, said that he worries that we are becoming a police state and that we are now, he says, policing thoughts. The government is the one that has entrenched and created distrust between communities through the counter-terror laws and the prevent strategy. It didn't even deem it appropriate to speak to the community, uh, which is the focus of this whole prevent strategy. They did not speak to Muslims before passing this uh, devastating bill. Um, it is the one that uh, has forced uh, particular service providers or service providers to spy and monitor Muslims, doesn't that create distrust? My CTS workshops actually try and reconstruct, rebuild that trust and rebuild that community cohesion that has been destroyed by irresponsible politicians and irresponsible legislation such as the CTS Act. Um, when I have spoken to various audiences, in my CTS workshops, there's been standing room only in certain circumstances. I never dreamed that they would last for six months. I never dreamed that I would be traveling up and down the country. But one of the things we talk about in the CTS workshop is the community response. And I advise uh, parents, doctors, social workers, teachers, head teachers, medics, law students, lawyers, uh, all of these people from a range of professionals to go and speak to their colleagues, to go and speak to their teachers, to expose the agenda behind the CTS Act. Because effectively, the government's prevent policy is not about terrorism. It is about uh, the kind of experiences that people have relayed to me. It is about targeting children who have asked for a prayer room. Uh, and these children are being cross-examined by four teachers for half an hour as to why they want that prayer room. It is about children who have been wearing their trousers above their ankles. Um, prevent officers thought it would be appropriate to go and ask their parents in their homes why this was the case. It is about children who have learning difficulties, who play around with a wooden sword saying, I'm going to kill you. And they are immediately referred to social services before speaking to mother. It is about those sort of cases in which Islamic values and Islamic beliefs are under the spotlight here. And the Quran itself is under the spotlight here. It is not about terrorism. It is not about extremism. This has been my experiences in the many, many reports that women have come uh, and told me about. And every example I give at any given workshop is met by something worse when these women uh, approach me after the workshop or put their hand up during the workshop and say, this happened to me and this happened to me. Um, these are the kind of things that cause distrust. Actually, the Muslim community is trying to reach out and rebuild the devastating damage that has been uh, committed in the name of the war on terror and national security. I think we have to continue raising awareness about um, the defamatory nature, the very dangerous nature of the prevent strategy. I think as a society, we need consistency and we need to unify. So effectively, uh, some of the things that I have been doing is speaking to uh, people of a faith or no faith. Um, teachers, doctors, I've spoken to social workers, lawyers, magistrates um, about the CTS Act and raised awareness about it. And I know that parents are beginning to do that. Um, there has to be a very real community response. If government will not speak to Muslims themselves and they brand everyone who challenges uh, their narrative as extremists, we have to speak to the service providers that are now being effectively forced, um, which means that they don't want to. They don't want to monitor children as young as two. They don't want to um, 
they don't want to move away or remove the trust that patients have of their doctors and confidential issues of confidentialities. The, these are the people that we need to be speaking to. And it's been very successful. I've had amazing responses to this. Uh, for us as a Muslim community, we shouldn't be intimidated by the prevent strategy. We should continue to hold on to our values, regardless of uh, uh, the intimidation that is being meted out by uh, government. We need to uh, not feel embarrassed. We need to be proud of our values. They are the values that brought about a civilization that was hailed a huge success. And we need to continue with our debates and not feel that somehow we are apologetic about being Muslims and reach out to all the good people out there who are service providers, our neighbours, everyone that we know and explain what it feels like actually and what it, what, it, what it means for us as Muslims to be living under the prevent strategy. Because effectively, just because it is not happening to you, it doesn't mean it is not happening.